Good morning, Chapel family. I hope every single one of you are doing good right now. It's uh, such an honor and such a blessing to be here with every single one of you. Uh, as y'all know, uh, we are currently right now, uh, once again, doing our online services. So we just wanna go ahead and let y'all know that you are loved, you're appreciated, you're a huge blessing to what's uh, going around. So uh, we're just so honored that we're able to still stay connected. <clears throat> because of uh, what transpired uh, this whole week, we were not able to have our worship team get together and uh, record or get ready to go ahead and lead y'all to worship. So we're just gonna go ahead and get into the word, go ahead and deliver what the Holy Spirit has been uh, developing within my spirit. Uh, before we uh, go ahead and engage a little further, I want to uh, go ahead and encourage you and let you know that we're not able to even be a ministry if it's not for your prayers, if it's not for your service, if it's not for your time, and also your giving, your generosity. Now, I understand that uh, uh, around this season, it's a huge struggle for a lot of families, and we get it. Uh, we are actually working as a church collectively to make sure that if there are any people within our church that are, are in need of something, that you can uh, reach out to us. Uh, we we want to go ahead and connect with you and, and hear you out and basically go from there. Um, I also uh, want to remind you that if you're able to give, that you uh, uh, can give easy online or you can actually text to give. Just text the number that's on the bottom. That way uh, it's able to allow you to go ahead and get connected. Uh, we just want to encourage you that if you're able to do this, continue to do it. So, I uh, want to go ahead and get into the word. So right now I'm actually a one man team. Usually we have our uh, wonderful um, media director that she just handles this and she does it to the T. But I'm going to try to be as I can on my end and go ahead and make sure that we're able to go ahead and move forward. But you know what? Right now, where you are sitting, how about you just lift up your hands right now? Let's just go ahead. Um, I know the Holy Spirit's already moving within uh, within your home. I hope you were jamming to some worship music. You were just listening to some praise music. You were having a praise break. Get your coffee, get your notebook, get ready. Let's go ahead and dig into the word. I am so ready to deliver what I know Holy Spirit has been developing in us. It was awesome to see y'all last Sunday, but guess what? Let's go right now. Let's go begin to pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord that you are the one that comes and changes the atmosphere, God, around us, Lord. That we know, God, that chaos and, uh, and, and pandemics, Father, and situations, God, and things that we cannot control may surround us, God. But your word lets us know, God, that it shall not come near us, Father. Nothing formed against your children, God. Nothing formed against those that are redeemed, God. Nothing formed against those that know you as Jesus are able to come and have anything to come and take away, Father, their life, take away their peace, take away, Father, their integrity, because we know, God, the type of Jesus that we serve. I thank you, Father, because there's nothing impossible for you, God, for your hedge of protection is around not just my chapel, not just around our families, not just our loved ones, God, but broadly, God, around even our neighbors, God. Lord, we are firm believers, Lord, that uh, that uh, 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 you will protect, God, and you will bless even those, God, that have access unto us, because that's what kingdom people end up doing. We worship you, and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. Come on. I can see the comment section right now. Can I get an amen in the comment section? Yeah. So I'm so thankful that we're able to uh, uh, connect. Like I said, I had a good time last week, y'all. It was almost four months since I had not had the opportunity to preach in front of people. But here we are once again. But you know what? I am not upset because we have technology. We have access. Uh, we have all these things able to connect to everyone. So we're going to continue about our topic that we started last week called Secret Places. Uh, I've been uh, uh, discussing this topic uh, already a few weeks ago. And my question for you is, what do you do when you feel that you get bad news? What is the first thing you do? Uh, whenever you get, uh, you know, the uh, overall uh, position where you feel overwhelmed, where you feel completely in despair and you get news, you get a phone call, you get a text, you get an email. What's the first thing that you do? I know some people usually they go and uh, they'll uh, um, eat uh, as far as to feel satisfied. They'll eat. Uh, some people go to other substances and 
they'll take some uh, a volume or they'll take a pill or some people even go to the bottle and that's the way that they're coping that's the way that they're moving forward you know one thing that i learned since i was a young man is that there is one thing that i need to do any time that i feel that i need guidance i need a change i need a shift i just need to have a different uh, uh agenda different to what has been unveiled in front of me and i'm going to share with y'all one of my favorite scriptures y'all this has been a scripture that has been foundational in my life ever since i gave my heart to jesus uh, when i was 15 years old i'm 35 years old so think about it. it's almost 20 years ago that this scripture was revealed to me and forever has changed my whole existence this is matthew 6 verse 6 and it says but when you pray go into your room and shut the door i love this and i want to stop right there because literally god is telling us shut the noise out y'all shut everything out shut the negativity shut all that stuff let, let, let's continue to read and pray i love it because before you pray sometimes you have to shut some things down some oh i'm preaching this morning i'm telling y'all if i'm not able to preach to y'all in person i'm gonna preach to y'all online shut the door and pray some of us the reason why we're not even to able to even listen to the voice of god while we're engaging in prayer is because we still have not shut our minds down we have not shut down uh, uh the uh the the assaults the uh things that the enemy has uh, 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 brought against us but here jesus is speaking once again says but when you pray i love it jesus is teaching us how to pray some of us maybe need a, a lesson in pray go into your room um, there's another version that says go into your prayer closet and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Another version says he will, uh, uh, when you pray in secret, you shall be rewarded in public. Now let's go ahead and pray and enter into the word. Father, we are so thankful for your word. We bless it right now. Every person viewing, every person connected in Jesus name. Amen. Why is this so important? Because there are some secret places that we need to engage in, y'all, and it has nothing to do with how man handles the situation. We need to always remind ourselves that the way the world wages war is not the way that we wage war. It's not how our Jesus has always waged war. You have to always understand that if you are a follower of Christ, the perspective that Jesus has will always be so much different to the perspective that you may have. Matthew 6, 6 lets us know that in order to enter into a secret place of prayer, you need to shut some things down. You need to close your door. You need to pray in secret and begin to talk to God in secret. Let me tell y'all, praying, uh, a, a lot of us have had this cu uh, this custom that we want to put our prayers only in, in, in public places. And, and there's nothing wrong with asking uh, public uh, prayer requests. And I encourage you to do that. And if you have prayer requests right now, put in the comment section. We want to unite with you and begin to pray with you. But there is something when you are so dependent on the prayers of other people, do not limit your access unto God. Stop relying on someone else's relationship with Jesus to be the reason why you are expecting your breakthrough. If you have Jesus as your savior and he's living inside of you, you have so you are a per citizen of heaven, meaning that you have all access unto the Father by Jesus. You have access into him. The, the truth of the matter is that uh, uh, maybe the reason why you're feeling uneasy, unable to even feel like yourself, and uh, uh, maybe you feel the threats coming your way and fear setting it in, is because you have yet to discover the secret place where God wants to take you. Your secret place has to start in your prayer closet. It has to start in your prayer room. I remember just uh, uh, growing up and, and, and at times walking by the hall and hearing my dad or hearing my mom on their knees and calling them to God and just asking God, Lord, move in my kids' life and uh, uh, manifest the power of your, uh, of, of, of your spirit in them. And, and it, it would just bring chills to me because I felt so blessed to have parents that were praying for not just myself, but even my siblings and believing that God uh, uh, could bring the type of life that we've always wanted to do. And it's not just about having things, y'all. We have to take this 
over our consumerism type of mindset out of ourselves and begin to understand that even if everything is stripped away from us, will you still say God is good? Will you still shout hallelujah? Will you still say that God is for me? Who dare be against me? When we feel that everything is taken away from us, we have to be in a position as a uh, believers and the body of Christ where we understand it starts in our secret place. Say with me, secret place. You have to go to your secret place. How long has it been since you've gone to your prayer closet? How long has it been that you have shut the door and begin to speak to God? Maybe you did it when you were believing for a spouse. Maybe you did it when you were believing for a breakthrough. Maybe you did it because you're believing for God to heal a loved one. Maybe you uh, you did it when you're believing for a job, when you're believing for a promotion, a ministry, even opportunity. And then you begin to stop. We have to allow and understand that we cannot forget of where God has taken us out of. Because a lot of us, we started out of nothing. We had no access to anything, but yet we have seen the promotion after promotion, the victory after victory begin to arise in our lives. Why? Because in the beginning of our lives, we understood one specific thing. that My life, the, the, the breakthroughs and the promises and the things that I'm believing for, it all started in my secret place, which is my prayer closet. Say with me, my, my secret place is my prayer closet. Where is your prayer closet? Where is the time? Have you devoted to it? Look, church, we have been in quarantine. A lot of us have not been able to leave our home. You're working from home, and I know it's chaotic at times, but have you made an opportunity for you yourself to get on your face and seek the Lord and begin to say, God, what do you have to say but to me in this situation? Or are you more engaged in conspiracies and in, 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 in the secular media? Are you more engaged in to what he said and she said and all these other things, or are you in a situation where you're saying, God, I do not want to allow myself to be contaminated with anything that has to do with nothing that is about you. The world as a collective whole has been placed uh, during a season throughout this year to be by themselves. As a world, um, it seems that that, that, that that society is making us to be disattached from loved ones, co-workers, social events, even worship places. For so many people, it has even surfaced anxiety, depression, disconnect, and probably a lot of people even feeling alone. Maybe that's you. Maybe you have felt anxious, you have felt depressed, you have felt just alone, abandoned, and you're just saying, I don't know, really know what's going on, Pastor. A lot has to do with what is continually being pushed upon us through every aspect of society. It's not just one thing to blame. Why is it? Why do, is it that we feel alone? You know why? Because the Bible says that it's not good for man to be alone. And it's not referencing that that we ourselves uh, uh, have to be in a romantic relationship. And I teach this a lot and I share this a lot, but it's the truth. Uh, one of the things that we say here at Chapel is that uh, we want to do life with you, meaning that we want to engage with other people. Let me tell you, one of the worst things at times is being utterly alone by yourself with your thoughts, captive uh, 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 with, uh, with your feelings all by yourself. And if you're not in in the secret place of your prayer closet, in the moment of seeking God, you can easily begin to hear one voice of someone called the devil. I can uh, uh, um, come to a position in my life where uh, uh, just, just a few years ago, probably I want to say maybe about eight or to nine years ago, I got news about something in that so devastated me. It so wounded me. It hurt me to the core of my existence, y'all. I just was in so much despair. I felt alone. I felt abandoned. I, I, I was engaged around that time. I mean, I've always had a supportive family, but it was just something I was dealing with. It was so much pain and misery that was happening. And you know what ended up happening? Now you're talking to someone around that time that traveled all over the country, that preached all over different places, had around uh, 10 to 11 years of ministry um, uh, uh, under his belt. I mean, saw God move, but yet uh, because it was a season of my life, I felt so alone, felt so abandoned that I began to hear the voice of the enemy. Where he began to tell and plant those seeds and saying, you're nothing, you're worthless, 
God's promises aren't true. Nothing's going to come your way. And guess what ended up happening? After a while, because I entertained those thoughts, I began to allow that to uh, almost to an exempt, uh, uh, exempt to have its place in my life. But it wasn't until one day on a prayer walk, as I was praying, I was crying, and I just feeling sorry for myself, that I felt God give me one of the most amazing rebukes and corrections that I've ever had in my life, where Jesus literally speaks to me. He says, okay, are you done listening to the voice of that liar? And are you ready to begin to listen to what I have to say about your situation? Man, it changed me. Because I begin to exert certain practices where I myself was doing things in in, uh, in 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 a carnal manner, and I was going about it in a fleshful manner, and I forgot that at the core I'm a spiritual being, and God is spirit, and I have to go in a spiritual way, approach Him, and go into my prayer closet and begin to speak to Him once again. And because of that, I was set free that day. Something in me changed. Something in me shifted, and I and and I'm still here standing in front of you. Why? Because God is uh, trying to awaken something in, in us. Look, there's a deep desire, y'all. There's a deep desire um, in me at times to see that we are currently living and find meaning and value. A lot of y'all are probably saying, Lord, why? Why Harris County? What's going around? Could it be that maybe all of this stuff, y'all, I mean, we're talking about from the crazy, well, what, 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 one of the most uh, uh, just, just weird, insane years that we've ever existed. Could it be that all this is preparing a marriage supper of the Lamb? Meaning that the groom is coming soon for his bride? The issues that we're facing aren't just economic, but social unrest, the financial declines, and even houses of worship that are closed. It's not an easy world to experience or even live in, y'all. But look, I take heart in this scripture found in John 16, verse 33. Uh, John 16, verse 33, these are the words of Jesus. He says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have peace tribulation, you will have situations, you will have chaos, you will have pandemics, you will have job loss, you will have a, 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 a divorce, you will have a, a, a death, you will have all these things, but take heart. This is Jesus' words. I have overcome the world. How is it <coughs> that we're able collectively as people, ordinary people, to be in a position where we are now uh, able to live this John 16, verse 33 life. How is it? It's about us understanding that our, our uh, uh, Heavenly Father has everything under control. That He's sovereign, He's perfect, and He knows what is going around. And even if we face whatever we face, we have to always take heart. Take hold of your heart. Take hold of your prayer. Take hold of your spiritual walk with God. Take hold of what God has presented unto you and begin to know that he has overcome the world. Look, I'm going to share some uh, a few scriptures with y'all and just to remind you about the awesomeness of what Jesus continues to tell us. That Rome, uh, 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 Romans 8, 18, and I just heard that this morning through uh, one of our overseers that had a, uh, um, a Zoom meeting with our team and said, I consider that our present sufferings are, are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now, let me tell you, you're not just suffering just to suffer. You're not going through issues just to go through issues. You have not been attacked just to be attacked. You have not endured just to endure. You have not gone through the things that you have gone through just to go through a church. But it's all because the glory of God is being manifested throughout your life. You have to understand a test is just a preparation for a testimony. The uh, issues that arise against you is just for his glory. The giant arises and begins to threaten 
Harris County and we see this COVID situation begin to occur, this is where we stand up. And even if we have to shut out, we are, are the church and we still stand up and say, not in my house, not in my home, not in my family, nothing will come against my home. Why? Because we know that the glory that will be revealed in us. Why does it have to be revealed in us? Because a lot of times we need to remind ourselves that we ourselves can be so complacent in a spiritual level and forget about where God took us out of. I'm preaching this morning. I have to preach. Look, I'm going to tell you, I want to be very honest. This has been one of the most interesting weeks of 2020 for me in my home. It has been crazy, y'all. I don't have enough time, man. I, I, don't, I don't need to be sharing of, of, of everything that, that we went through uh, this week. But I want to share just a few more scriptures with y'all. Jesus already told us um, about this. Uh, it's in that poem. Uh, to shock us at all, meaning that all the situations that are, ha that are happening shouldn't shock us, right? We cannot be followers of Christ and believe that everything around us will always be for us. We have to understand that uh, there will be a moment, scripturally speaking, prophetically speaking, that society and the government may decline and there might be a persecution of the church. If you don't believe it, get in your word. Now, I understand that that, that we need to fight we need to vote. We need to do our part um, on a uh, on that level. But this is where we have to know that if these things are to happen, it's because Jesus is coming back. My question to you is, if he is coming back, where will you be in that moment? Where will your family be in that moment? Will you be taken? Or will you be left behind? Will you be that one that is in the field? The, the two that are in the field, one is stays behind and the other one is taken. Will you be that one that's in the bed and one is taken and one is left behind? You have to begin to analyze. Look, church, if there's ever a time to consecrate ourselves, if there's ever a time to uh, humble ourselves, if there's ever a time to come into a place within ourselves and say, God, I am tired of living disgusted and, 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 and hurt and broken because of what has occurred around me. God, I need to be set free. I encourage you. This is the season that you go to your prayer closet and you say, God, no more destruction around me, Jesus. It stops, and not only does it stop with me, but it stops with my, uh, it stops with me, and it will not go and touch my kids no more. This is where we begin to become people of legacy. Want to share more scriptures with y'all? Just these are three points that I want to share with y'all when it comes towards being in a secret place, right? And encountering the situations and 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 and, and all the uh, uh, things that, that surround us. Uh, uh, my first point is that he will take care of you. So me, he will take care of me. Uh, Matthew 6, 26, verse 28. I love the scripture. Matthew 6, 26, verse 28. It says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? And which of you being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. We can stop right there. Jesus is speaking and he's letting us know that his father so considers creation that he takes care of him. Who else feeds uh, uh, the animals? Who else did everything in nature of how he created it? God took care of them. Listen, church, even when Adam and Eve sinned against the Lord and they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden because they were no longer holy. and They were separated because of the sin that was in them. The Bible says that God an animal, slaughtered the animal, and out of the clothing, made clothing for Adam and Eve and sent them out of their way. He still took care of them because he saw the nakedness that they had and still, still shed blood. Jesus, a uh, 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 God shed blood, uh, uh, the, the first one that shed blood for uh, in, in humanity because of the sin of others and because that he clothed his creation. And all throughout that process, he all that God was ever trying to do is once again connect to his creation. That's all he's trying to do right now. 
Maybe this is finally allowing for you to wake up and stop playing church and stop playing uh, around with your faith and understand that that uh, uh, God is someone that we do not mock. That he's someone that we need to play, uh, uh, pay close attention unto. Do not allow for this season for your heart to grow hard and for you to become so hardened of, uh, of character that you miss the bigger picture. There is a political agenda divide that wants to come and separate people. I have seen loved ones. I have seen friends argue about Things that, uh, and, 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 and I know that there's a lot of conversations that need to be done, but as a creation, as people, we need to understand the first thing that our dedication into it is to is not anything that's outward, but what's inside. That is how God looks at it. And if you want to talk about this, we can sit down and talk because what a bit because uh, 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 God told Samuel, He said, Man looks on the Outside, man is always looking at color. A man is always looking at the color of the skin. He's always looking at the clothing the person's wearing, uh, uh, how they look, the physicality. But people view. We need to understand that what God is looking for is not just an outward, but He's looking for the inward. Where is your heart? Where is your humanity? Where is your giving of yourself unto God? He took care of creation. He'll surely take care of you. Since this is a promise that belongs to every believer. Now, it may not be uh, the care that you want. Because a lot of times God uh, uh, took care of a lot of people supernaturally, but then people begin to complain because that's not what they wanted. You have to be careful that you yourself don't uh, uh, come to position. This is why. Go back to your secret place. Go back to your prayer closet. Begin to go into humility and begin to even thank God for bread. Thank God that we are not in a situation like our our, uh, our brothers and sisters in the nations where, 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 where they're starving. Um, I even heard reports and and, and uh, keep, keep the nation of Venezuela in prayer where there are people, y'all, that are uh, eating dead rats. That's what they're eating. That's all that they have because they're starving. They don't have <laughs> another way to survive. Our situation is not as bad. <clears throat> and yet we, at times we're complaining about so many things. God will take care. God has taken care of us. Uh, I, I, I'm so blessed when I hear some of our people within our church, and I'm always praying for you. I'm always praying for your finances. When I'm hearing, yeah, I'm still working, and and uh, I'm, I'm, we're uh, working a lot of hours, but I'm still working, Pastor, and a lot of things are happening. I praise God for that. Just continue to know that God's going to take care of you. Take care of God's kingdom. Do what God has called you to do. Give unto God what belongs to him, and he will continue to take care of you. My second point is he has always taken care of his own. He's always taking care of his own. Who's his own? It's not all humanity. I know, I know it's popular y'all, for a lot of people to say, well, we're all created, or we're, we're all children of God. When reality is that we're not all children of God. In order to become a child of God, you need to go through Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes into the Father but through him. Psalms 37 verse 25 says, I have been young and now I am old. I'm not that old, yet I have not just forsaken or his children for bread, meaning that God will always take care of his children. He will always take care of the redeemed. He will always take care of those. If you don't are skeptic about this, look at the nation of, uh, of Israel. Look at the Jewish people. Yeah, they've gone through a lot, but how, how has God been with them and taking care of them? And still, they continue to move forward. Look at your life. Analyze where you are right now. Why? Because a lot of people understand that the source of everything, the one that owns everything, has everything in his hands, is the Lord God. Look, God will use anything. I want to share a story with y'all. There was once a woman that was praying outside of her house. She was an elderly woman. She's praying and she's uh, seeking God and she didn't have a lot of money. She was a widower. She's older. She didn't have a lot of stuff. And she's praying. She said, God, please help me, God. Uh, bless my home, God. I'm running out of uh, food, Lord. Um, I don't have money. Uh, uh, send someone, God. Provide, God. You, you, you're you, my provider. You are uh, the one that blesses me. This woman, this woman continued to pray. 
So the story says that her neighbor was someone did not believe in God. That, uh, that uh, on the contrary, they would always mock. He would always mock her. He'd always make fun of her. And he heard this prayer one day. So he said, "Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and buy groceries. I'm going to take it to this woman so that she can see that it's not God that provides for her." So this man goes to the grocery store, gets a bunch of groceries. He goes to the door. Uh, uh, he knocks. She opens the door. He said, look, woman, here's your groceries. I'm just letting you know that God isn't the one that provides. Uh, 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 it, it, it wasn't God. It was me. So here's the groceries. I love the story because the perspective of this woman, when she grabbed the groceries, she said, God, I praise you and I thank you because you even use the devil to bless me. <laughs> You see, look, church, you have to know that God will use even the enemy himself to come and bless you and provide to you and take care of you. This is what we, we have to look at, it, into it. Look, the way though this world operates, it's wicked. We cannot say that we live in a wonderful, beautiful world. I wish that it was unicorns and rainbows. I wish that it was all leprechauns and all these things. But at the end of the day, we see that it is a wicked world. But yet God has always taken care of his own. He's always taking care of his children. Why? Because that's the type of Jesus that we serve. Uh, last point is that he is always present. He's present. He's there. He's available. He's available with a, all you need to do is call upon his name. He's available to you. You don't have to be going to people to read your palm. You don't have to go to horoscopes. You don't have to go to things and, and try to read the stars and read bones and do all this stuff. No, because God is mightier than all of that. Matthew 28, verse 20, uh, uh, verse 20. I love this scripture. And I'm paraphrasing this scripture. It says, teaching them to, and behold, <coughs> I am with you always to the end of the age or to the world. Jesus is telling his disciples to go and preach the gospel and do all these things. But I love how Jesus finishes it off. He says, I am with you until the end. Meaning that no matter what happens, church, guess who's always going to be with us? Say with me, Jesus is with me till the end. Jesus will never forsake me. Jesus has never left me. You see, we at times during these seasons of feeling helpless seem to feel as if God has lost control. And he is no longer able to take care of us. We need to awaken and realize that we can easily give into the broken ways of thinking. Uh, what, what you do uh, when, when you feel lost, everything has been destroyed. Promises of the Lord that he gave you seem to be far away. Um, my simple answer is, have you gone to your secret place? Have you gone to your prayer closet? What's that? A secret place or a prayer closet is a time when you intentionally begin to spend time with God. Meaning, depending, it, 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 it's not Sunday morning. That's not your prayer closet. I don't know if y'all knew that. Going to your prayer closet is not Sunday. It's not when the pastor goes and blesses you. It's not that. It's not when you do communion. It's when you, as a follower of Christ, intentionally engage and say, God, here I am. Speak to me. I have learned, church, that throughout everything in life, it is better to trust him and trust this process than to lean on my own understanding. Because there's nothing... <coughs> Excuse me. There's nothing worse to be than to be in a situation where you are trying to take care of things on your own ability. The thing is, in the spiritual realm is whenever we go to a prayer closet, we begin to speak to God. We become uh, connected to the source of all creation of the whole universe where he himself begins to pour into us right now, right then, right there, and he begins to move in us. And I'm not saying when you go to prayer, it's about asking and asking and asking. Look, there is a season to ask, but if anything, church, we need to learn to be people of worship. We have to go into his presence. 
uh, with, with the acts of thanksgiving and begin to worship our Jesus and begin to say, I'm thankful for wh- uh, how good you've been. Uh, at times I haven't had a lot. Sometimes I have had a lot, but yet you have still sustained me. You forgave me when I could not forgive myself. You healed me when I felt so uh, uh, infirm. You changed me. You transformed me. You set my feet upon a rock. You established me in a a different manner, God. That is why I am okay. Going into your prayer closet is very important because that is a secret place that is more important than any safe space. Some people say space isn't even biblical. Instead of it building them up, it continues to destroy them bound them. And I'm going to finish with this last story in the Bible in scripture. Perspective from David going when he encountered a moment that was so unexpected where it just seemed that life just shifted. Now, backtrack David. Who is David? He is an anointed young man uh, uh, who was anointed as a young man to be king in the future. This time within this story, he has been chased by his father-in-law. He finally made it to the palace. He married the princess, so that makes him a prince. He's an important person in society, but yet his father-in-law is jealous of him, and he's looking to kill David. And here we pick up on 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. It says, Now when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid against the Nagub and against Ziklag. (laughs) <laughs> they had overcome Ziglag and burned it with fire, taking captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They but carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. So let's stop right there. Have you ever been in that position where you just do not have no more tears? You just can't cry no more. You don't have enough to say. You're just so overwhelmed. I'm going to give you an answer to what to do when you're in that position. Verse 5. David's two wives had also been taken captive. uh, uh, Aninoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. And David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because of all the people were bitter in soul. Does it look like kind of reality right now that uh, some people may not be stoning, but they're stoning with words? They say things like, I'm going to unfollow you, uh, unfriend me, you're this, you're that. They start labeling and they start throwing stones of words unto you. They want to stone the anointed one of God and they wanted to kill them because of uh, because of the bitterness in their soul. We see this so many times. Why are people bitter in their soul? I'm going to tell you all why. Each for his sons and daughters. Why? Because they have got, uh, gained lots of loss, have gained a huge um, thing where the enemy came and took away what belonged to them. And because of that, they felt that it was necessary to go ahead and take someone's life away. But it's amazing because David could have been someone else and he could have ran off and said, no, you're not going to take my life. But look at this, what David did after hearing about him getting stoned, about hearing that the enemy took away his family, about hearing about all this stuff. They're coming home from battle. They're tired. They have seen victories. They are, are, are praising. They get home. And what they know as society, as home, is burned down to the ground, their wives and their sons and daughters aren't there. They're hurt. These men are broken. They're upset. They're bitter in soul for each of them uh, of what has happened. But check this out. Look how this uh, verse ends. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. How How did he do that? He had to go to a secret place. He had to go to a place that was familiar to him, 
a place that as a young man, he while, 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 while he was herding sheep um, and, and he would sing unto God and worship the Lord uh, God Almighty there in his private place. And also the lion and a bear would come and with his own fist, he would go and take out everything that tried to uh, uh, take away what belonged to him. Look, church, I'm here to prophesy to you this morning that we need to awaken and, and, and go into position and understand that David knew what loss was. He lost his, his, his family. He lost everything. It looked like all the things that God had ever spoken unto him. <laughs> he was anointed to be king. The people that were about to uh, 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 touch him, they were about to take him out because of this act. It was not David's fault because of their family were taken away. Yet, uh, they were bitter in their soul. They re in a way that was not of God. It, isn't that relevant to today's time? Isn't it relevant to what is occurring around us where people are so bitter of the past? They're so bitter of what's gone. But what if a generation, instead of being bitter in soul, begin to strengthen themselves in, oh, I'm preaching this morning, begin to strengthen themselves in the Lord God, they begin to go into a place where they begin to say, God, you are in control. Lord, do I need to go? And in the next verses, he says, do I need to pursue the Amalekites? Yes or no, God. He still is asking for direction. Some of us, we're reacting praying. We are uh, speaking without really praying. We are moving without praying. We are doing things without praying. We are going about life without praying. We are purchasing things without praying. We are going into a situation or relationship without praying. You have to understand that no one brings uh, the bitterness of soul unto themselves, but to themselves. We ourselves can no longer be captive unto this ideology, unto this thing of the enemy, but you have to begin to pray. What ends up happening is that David assembles the men, they go and they rescue that their family, nothing harmed them. Why was his family not harmed? I'm going to tell y'all why. Because when you are anointed and the, and, and, and the mantle of God is over your life, no harm can come over your house, y'all. You have to take this chapel. You are anointed. You are covered. You are taken care of. You have to uh, uh, choose. Will you be bitter in soul or will you be someone that strengthens themselves in the Lord? Will you strengthen yourself in the Lord? Will you continue to live bitter? Live with unforgiveness. Blame everybody but yourself. There are some things that God has to do in us, to awaken in us, that we stop being stagnant with our walk in him. Jesus did not sin. Jesus did not come on this world to build a social club. He built to build a kingdom, not a kingdom the way the world sees it, but a kingdom that brings upon a shift in people's hearts and perspective. Where are you right now? Why aren't you in your prayer closet no more? What has taken you away from this? Don't allow for the things that have happened in the past to have the best of you. I know that a lot of racial racial uh, uh, reconciliation needs to happen. I know that a lot of healing has to happen in a lot of homes. Uh, look, there's so much hurt and pain happening around us. But being bitter in soul is not going to help the situation. What's going to help us is if we begin to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. And we pray that God exposes those that are in error. And you know what amazes me? And I'm going to finish with this. David rescues his family. All the other men are rescued. And David does not lift his hand against those that wanted to stone him. This is why this man was called a man after God's heart. Why was he man after God's heart? Because he understood secret places. Places of surrenderance, places of giving of himself, of pouring out, of saying, I am nothing without you, Jesus. If one thing that has kept me afloat through all these years 
But all the pain that at times life throws us, through all the attacks that the devil has brought to all evil reports, to all moments that I felt like giving up and say, I just can't, God. This is too much. Is that I found my prayer closet and I just begin to pray unto God. And I said, Lord, nothing compares to your spirit. I have failed you so many times. I have been unfaithful to you, God. I have done things that I am ashamed of, God. But for some reason, you still see worth in me. If he's done it for me, church, I promise you, he will surely do it to you. Stop living bitter in your soul. Give it up. Give everything to him. Give him the pain. Give him the misery. Give him the heartache, the broken part. Begin to walk to where he is trying to take you. All this points to the cross. At the cross, that's where I found myself. Your identity cannot be defined by a person. A person cannot make you whole. A person does not have the power to resurrect you. Only Jesus does. Church, I encourage you all that as y'all join us during this season, don't know how long we're going to be together online. But you do not stop seeking. And that we do, as a church, collectively gather together, even if it's through these platforms, what Zoom meetings or whatever that may say. Do not allow yourself to go another Sunday, another day, without you going into your prayer closet and seeking of him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. He's for you. He's not against you. But there are things that God's trying to do in you. But he's waiting for you to act. This faith without actions is dead. Things cannot change unless you begin to do the action of what you're believing for. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? If you're not in your secret place and if you're not in your prayer closet and you still have chaos coming around you, then you know why. But if you're going to your prayer closet and you're going to your war room and you are just saying, God, you are going to save my marriage. You're going to heal my family. You're going to rescue my children. You're going to increase my finances. God, even when others are losing everything, God, Lord, I'm believing that my business begins to prosper, God. Lord, this is the season, God, where you're going to shock me, Father, financially, where my debts will shall be canceled, God, where I'm going to see the increase of glory and revelation like I I've never seen it before, God. I may have not had opportunity to go to seminary, but your spirit teaches well, and I'm going to get on my face. You're going to open up the scriptures, and I'm going to see a part to you like I've never seen, and so be it. This is the type of Jesus that I serve, and this is why I've given everything that I am to live for him. Because I want to see wonderful people that are viewing right now and may rebroadcast like yourself. To come into a moment in their lives where they can taste and see that the Lord is God. I want to finish with the prayer. If you yourself need uh, to give your heart to Jesus, please reach out. We want to do this part in person. Um, Message us, message me personally on my own Facebook, and um, I'm willing to go ahead and speak to you and and connect with you. Um, But I want to pray right now. I just want to bless y'all um and and continue to connect father i am so thankful lord for all that you are doing god in the midst god of the power of your holy spirit holy father we just ask you god that you take care of all people that are around us lord i thank you for the mind chapel family god and even those lord that were so excited last week got to finally be able to get together lord but because we are sensitive god to everything that's around us lord we take everything into a serious consideration and we believe god that health of our loved ones is more important
important than anything, God. We still have these platforms, God, that we're able to worship and connect, God, and 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 uh, interact with each other, God. So we praise you, Father, for the times that we're living in, God. Lord, we know, Lord, that this is the season. This is still the year of vision. You are showing clearly, Father, of the changes that need to be done within our lives, God. Lord, that you can uh, lead others, Father, to encounter their their uh, secret place, Father, where they can go to the prayer closet and close the door, Father, and just how David, God, separated himself and he strengthened himself in you, God, and was able to get back what the enemy took away from him, God. That is the formula of what you have built within us, Lord, that we are able, God, to go into our prayer room, Lord. Lord, we know in the natural we can't change anything, Father, but you have given us something called the keys to the kingdom, God, that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on in heaven shall be loosed upon the earth, Father. Lord, we know, Lord, that we ourselves, God, wage war not the way the world does, but we have spiritual weapons, Father, that we utilize as prayer, as the name of Jesus. That is uh, 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 the, the, the authority by the blood of Jesus, the word of God. We operate, Father, knowing, Lord, that the enemy is under our feet. And he has no say over our lives, our destiny, Lord. We thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Everyone, thank you all so much for connecting with us. Uh, hopefully next week we can have a better broadcast for you. Um, I'm so thankful for your lives. Stay connected. Stay prayed up. Go to your prayer closet. Do not despise the uh, moments that God has for you. Uh, we take everything into consideration. So we will be giving weekly updates. Um, it's looking for sure next Sunday. We're not going to be meeting in person yet. Uh, we're working on some measures to ensure that um, what we are doing is that we're doing properly to make sure that every single one of you are well taken care of. Church, um, stay connected. I love you guys. Um, thank y'all so much. Take care. Share this uh, a message. Tag someone in this because I know it will be a blessing to someone. God bless you.